Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for this special edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. Today, we have one of our senior HR professionals in the house in person of Mr. Larry Ojolo, and he'll be teaching us, he'll be facilitating this conversation, which is entitled Knowledge Management Systems and Institutionalization of Knowledge. Knowledge Management System and institutionalization, institutionalizing knowledge. Before I introduce him, just for the purpose of those who may, for one reason or the other, might not have had the opportunity of meeting him before, I'd like to say that this particular subject is very important, has always been important, but is particularly important today because of the JAPA syndrome. Apart from the JAPA syndrome, which makes people move or relocate from the organization and then from the company completely, we also relatively have a very high churn rate, attrition rate. People move in, some people spend one year, six months. So when people leave the organization, do they go away with the knowledge? Or how are we able to capture the knowledge? Meanwhile, I'm not um, the speaker or facilitator for today, but I just said I should just put out that thought so that some of us will appreciate one of the reasons why we are doing this. Okay, today our speaker is Mr. Onlari Waju Ojolo. Okay, and um, by way of education, he has his first degree, okay, from the University of Adoe Kitty. All right, he also has a master's in managerial psychology from the University of Lagos. He is a full member, in other words, he's not just an associate, he's a full member of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management. By way of a, a career experience and exposure, okay, he has worked as HR consultant, mastermind. Okay, he also worked as HR generalist with Royal Exchange PLC. He has worked as the HR business partner, AOS Well Limited. In the last few years, he has been working as a learning and development specialist with Sanlem, Nigeria. It is with pleasure that I invite Mr. Larry Ojolo as he takes over this session. Over to you, sir. Thank you once again for joining us. We appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thank you uh, so much for uh, the introduction. I want to appreciate uh, the privilege I have to be on this platform tonight to share a few thoughts and uh, we are going to be learning together. But sincerely, let me start on this note by appreciating uh, Mr. Yemi Adioshun for doing a great job with the HR mentorship uh, group and specifically speaking about the mentoring session that has been held. We will still get to talk about it. It's part of those things. I want us to also look at it and see what we can do for ourselves and for our respective organizations any moment from now. Thank you, sir, for contributing maximally to, to knowledge. I remember when his school dream master said, what are you going to bring to knowledge? So he has contributed in no small measure, in a great measure to knowledge management and knowledge development across the, the value chain of HR and even beyond um, the, the profession, human resources profession. So without wasting much time, uh, we'll go straight to where we are here uh, this good uh, evening. So I want to say good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are joining us from all over the world. Uh, once again, my name is Nare Uchulo, is Uchulo, and Melga was saying something about Sanlam. It's not Sanlam, it's Sanlam, Nigeria. Sanlam is uh, the Pan-African Insurance Company in, in Africa, we are the number one in Africa, and uh, we we have done well for ourselves. I will also tell you what we have done with regards to knowledge management system. So today we'll be looking at knowledge per se and uh, how it can be well managed, uh, as well as how we can institutionalize, institutionalize knowledge. How can we embed it in our systems? How can we ensure? that whenever, like he said, whenever uh, a talent leaves our system, whenever people retire, 
the kind of knowledge that is embedded in them, either through innately or through development or through one process or the other, they don't carry it away. But more important, more importantly than uh, concentrating on talent and employees is we're going to look at a broad view. So uh, I want to welcome you. We have done that. And again, we have our agenda. We'll be looking at knowledge management. What are the gaps? What are the issues that we have at the moment? Uh, we also have the opportunity of engaging you. We'll be making use of the chat box. So when I call on you uh, at a point in time, I want you to just eat the chat box and tell me what you feel so that we can uh, make this engaging. Then we're going to look at what exactly is a knowledge management system. We're going to look at types of KMS, which is uh, the short form of knowledge management systems. Why is it important? What are the benefits at the micro and at the macro level? We are going to be looking at the strategies. How can you institutionalize it for your organizations, for your groups, across different levels, both at the micro and at the macro level? Then we're going to be looking at knowledge management tools. We're going to be looking at the knowledge economy. There's something like knowledge economy and also be showing us uh, a life environment, three or four life environment where you can see what we, we are talking about. So you're not just, oh, this guy just put slides together and he's telling us, this is what is practical, this is what I've seen. Is what I use, this is what I've seen even across different organizations, across different groups. So uh, these are focus tonight. And I, I, I want to encourage you to stay in a quiet place. Let's learn together. It's a moment that we learn and we share few thoughts together. So I'm going to start. What is knowledge management? What is knowledge management? I want someone to please, if you are with us, it's the chat box. I'll be looking at the chat box now. What do you understand by knowledge? What do you understand by knowledge management? So I'm waiting for us to um, get a response. Think for your response in the chat box. What do you understand? Okay, if you say you don't understand anything about knowledge management, at least you know uh, the word knowledge. You are not hearing it for the first time. So I want you to eat the chat box. Uh, I want, I need your response in the chat box. Yes, sir. Thank you. He's saying we should respond. Everyone, uh, let's respond. What do you understand by the word knowledge? When it comes to you, what do you understand by the word knowledge? Before we even go to what we are looking at, which is knowledge management. What do you understand by the word knowledge? Uh, no one is responding. I would like to get at this. Okay, Adekoya Oluwakemi says, efficient handling of information and resources within a commercial organization. That looks like a Google response. Okay, that's fine. It is how actually the information <laughs> is created, stored, and utilized. That is, this is specifically speaking to knowledge management. Deborah says, information that is essential to understand the situation and problem. Fantastic, that's a good one. That's a good one. Let's keep it coming. Let's keep it coming. Uh, yes, KMS, Olua Dot says it's created to harness information and manage it such that it creates efficiency of talent in an organization, in organization development. Uh, that's a good one. Thank you, Dot. Can we get one or two more? One or two more. One or two more. Um, one or two more. Okay, I, I will leave it at that. Let's 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 proceed. Okay, I can see Funke Bless is saying, sorry, she's saying not KMN. KM is the process of preserving knowledge within an organization or system to ensure that knowledge of the business and processes uh cascaded to all members. Thank you, Funke. Baba Jide says knowledge refers to knowledge that is codified, thank you, and can be easily shared and communicated through language, symbols, or other forms of media. I like that divination, uh, Babajide Olowokere. Thank you everyone for that, um, uh, for participating in this class. We can refer to knowledge as facts. We can also refer to it as information. We can refer to it as details, like some of us have said. We are, uh, we, we, we are right by these contributions and we have an understanding of what it means by knowledge. I can see Fumi Balogun is saying process of identifying, capturing, 
organizing, sharing, utilizing knowledge to improve efficiency. Thank you, ma'am, for that contribution. And also thank you for joining us. So I'll go straight to what is knowledge management. Knowledge management, uh, in the words of uh, in the words of Tom Davenport, 1994, he says, knowledge management is a process of capturing, distributing, and effectively using knowledge. So some of us, what we said, we are right by the definition of what we categorize as knowledge, what we categorize as knowledge management. So it is a process that you capture, that you distribute, and you effectively utilize when organizations can capture knowledge, when they can codify knowledge, when they can distribute it and use it to their advantage. That is what knowledge management is all about. So you might be in an organization where knowledge of the processes, knowledge of the policies, knowledge of your product development are not codified. They are not captured. They are not distributed. They are not available, readily available anywhere within the system. There is lack. There is a lack. There is a gap. That is, there is a gap in knowledge. There is a gap in knowledge management. So having said all of this, I want us to also take a cue from the fact that when we refer to knowledge, knowledge, it's, I, I call it a subset of what we call competence. You know, when we refer to competence, it is K. SA. It is knowledge, skills, and abilities. So there is no how that I am going to talk about knowledge management without specifically making reference to competence or competency, whichever way you want to refer to it. But the, the truth of the matter is knowledge is a, a subset of competence, KSA. So we can also see another uh, perspective that to say the process of ensuring that we capture the knowledge, we capture skills, we capture the competence and abilities of individuals, of organizations, both at the micro and at macro level, and distribute them to get an advantage in the marketplace is what is knowledge management system. So, and that will lead us to the issues. You remember, we have issues when we talk about knowledge gap. And I, I want to believe in one way or the other, you and I, we have heard about that particular um, saying that knowledge gap, you have heard it over and over from one organization or the other. And in, in, even individually, you have heard about knowledge gap. There is always a knowledge gap. And uh, let me make this example uh, to, to, to be able for us, to, for us to understand specifically what we mean by knowledge. For instance, there was this particular story is on, on, is, is, is on the online space that when someone knows that something is available, he has a knowledge. For instance, if you are driving a car, you are, you are not aware that that car that you are driving has a spare tire at the back of the car, right there in the boot. There is a lack of knowledge. That is a knowledge gap that you don't, you are not even aware that this is available. Then the second level to this is the skills. Oh, now you are, you are aware, you have the knowledge that you have a spare tire at the back of the car, but you do not understand when you, you do not have the requisite skill, you don't have the, the skills for you to change that tire. Whenever there is a problem, there is a lack of skill. And when an incident not happen, and uh, 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 you have a flat tire on the road and you want that to change, you cannot change. And even when you, when you know you have the skills to change, but you do not know the technical OR, that is a gap between your current level and the special level. You are going on the road, you have a flat tire. Now you are aware that you have a tire, a spare tire in the car. You are aware that you have spanner, but you know how to do it, but you do not have the strength. Like some of the equipment that we have these days, you don't need to pull, you don't need to exert any energy. Just put, uh, there is a kind of machine that you put to it, it won't screw for you. But before this particular gadget came out, you need to exert pressure. And if, whenever you are, you don't have the competence to exert that pressure, that is what we refer to as performance gap. And you can also call it uh, a competence gap. So when we are, when we are saying 
gap. We are saying that at the micro level and at the macro level, we have what we call the knowledge gap. The knowledge gap in the sense that people don't know what they need to do to get to their respective destination. People don't know what to do to perform on the job. Organizations at times at the macro level do not know exactly what they need to do to achieve their goals and objective. And that is why knowledge management system is critical. And I will be taking at it, looking at this particular perspective, talking about the gap. For every organization, even at this particular graph is speaking to macro level, where organizations need to identify the gaps in their product development. You also need to identify, even at the micro level, individual level, the actual performance. Where is the gap? From what is expected of you on the job as an employee or as an employer, what is expected of you and what your current performance is, the potential performance versus your current performance. What is expected of what is actual performance? You need to identify a gap. There is a gap. And whenever organizations, like for instance, in my organization, we want to be uh, the most admired uh, financial institution in Africa. We want to be the number one insurance company in Nigeria. And for us to do that, we need to penetrate the markets. And for us to penetrate, we need to know where we are at the moment, and we need to understand where we need to be. So having this particular knowledge is critical. Talking about market growth, talking about diversification, all of these, they are variables, the variables of time and the variables of revenue. On the left-hand side, you have time and revenue. And if you look at this particular graph, it's saying there is high risk when you have a, when you have a gap in the potential performance of your organization or even at individual level. When there is a gap in your potential performance, when there is a gap in the market penetration, when there is a gap in product development, there is a risk. But the risk differs at different levels. There are several risks, but this risk differs when we're looking at what is obtainable within our respective organizations. So I want us to begin to look at it. Where are the gaps at the individual level? Personally, where are your gaps? Yes, this particular slide is speaking specifically to organization. Where do you want to be? Do we need to diversify? Do we need to get market growth? We want to get a larger uh, percentage of what is obtainable within the market. Then we need to sit down and identify where the gaps is. And uh, speaking to our country in Nigeria, you see that there is a gap. There is a gap when it talks about leadership development. There is a huge gap in leadership development in Nigeria. And when you look at educational sector, you look at the economic sector, when you look at what is obtainable uh, economically in Nigeria today, there is a huge gap. When we talk about financial inclusion in Nigeria and most parts of Africa today, there is a huge gap because knowledge is lacking. And when you look at the S SDG projects, the, the, the developmental goals uh, of uh, uh, UN, the SDG goals, one of them is um, quality education, financial inclusion. There were 17 of these goals. All of these goals, one of the critical things, one of the critical issues with regards to this is knowledge gap. So at every point in time, every individual, every organization needs to sit down to identify gaps when it comes to their products, when it comes to, to the actual performance when it comes to penetration, when it comes to market growth or individual growth, even when you take a look at it at the uh, micro level, at the individual level, personally, your career growth, what is it that you are lacking? There is a knowledge gap. Oh, you want to earn uh, so, so, so millions of naira every month, but you do not have the knowledge to earn that. So what you need to do is to identify, what do I need to do to move from where I am to that particular destination that I'm aiming, that, 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 that I'm look forward to get to. Those are the things that we put together and say, these are the gaps. And until individuals, until organizations sit down to identify all of these gaps, there will still be in existence these gaps until we're able. And there's this particular saying that says, uh, a problem identified is um, solved. And that particular gaps in, in the words, in the research done by McKinsey, they talk about the seven S, the seven S of gap analysis. 
You, could, you wouldn't just say that, oh, I've identified this. You need to now sit down and look at this particular framework. This particular framework is from McKinsey. They talk about the seven says, which are the shared values. I will talk about systems. This is where what we are discussing today. That's the knowledge that we are trying to share. What are the main systems that support and drive you as an individual? What are the systems that drives your business? What business controls? What are the guidelines that you have? Are they codified? Are they captured? Are they easily accessible within your system? And what is the, what is the status? And now we'll move us to the next S, which is strategy. What is your strategy? What is your organization's strategy? What are the objectives? If you do not have where you want to get to, there is no need of doing of having a knowledge management system. No. How do we achieve our goals? All of this will make any organization and even individual competitive. And now we can deal as decisively with competition. What is the structure? And I've heard, and if you if 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 you are very conversant with the recruiting industry, as many of our colleagues who specialize in the recruiting. I've done recruiting and I still do it once in a while. That's not the core of what I'm doing at the moment. But you see, you, you see a typical advance for a job role says must have worked in a structured environment. And they put it there. And some people say, ah, what's the meaning of this structured environment? It's not an organization, it's not registered. No, that, that particular statement is saying, what is the hierarchical structure and its reporting mechanism? How do departments coordinate activities? What is how is decision making centralized? So when we say structure, we mean that do your system have your organization? Do you have structure in place? Talking about how we solve problems, do you have business and contingency planning in place? Do you have risk management process in place? Do you know how do you have document that deals with how you are going to uh, resolve customer issues and customer challenges that come? These are the structure. And that specifically will lead us to the style. What is the style? And the style is also referring to a leadership style. Is it a participatory style? It is an opportunistic style. Is, is, it, is it a charismatic leadership style? Are people empowered? Are people encouraged to collaborate? Do we, do we allow people within our system, within an organization to come to work? And how do we change norms? What is the culture within the system? What is obtainable within an organization? And again, the two parts, the two aspects that I that I highlighted in purple and red, speak specifically to staff. And uh, all of the five is they are speaking at the macro level, I mean at the organizational level, but the other two is which is skills and uh, staff, they are speaking to individuals. What positions are vacant and need to be filled? What are the competency gaps that need to be addressed? whenever we're having this particular conversation regarding knowledge management system. What type of people do we need? What type of skills do we need? Until we are able to put them down and identify, not just going online to copy skills, what do we need to achieve? For instance, you want to have a customer experience manager within the system. What are the issues that you have with your current customers? What are the things that need to be resolved? What are the challenges that need to be resolved? And that will lead to specific skills in line with the strategy, but with the vision. What are the skill gaps? What are the skills that are available? How can this skill gap, how can be the managed? How can it be closed out? You know, one of the things that organizations do is to identify gaps. When we identify all of these gaps, how do we close them? How do we close them? And specifically, that one will be leading us to how do we bridge the gap? How do we ensure that as individuals, we have career growth and advancement, and we ensure that as organizations, we bridge the gap between our product knowledge, our, our potential performance with actual performance, where we want to achieve our objectives, what we want to do. How do we bridge all of these? That is exactly what we are looking at this particular session, uh, this, on, on, on this good day. And that leads us to knowledge management system. So all I've been saying in the past few minutes is to set the ball rolling to what we call knowledge management system. Remember, uh, we're talking about the gaps. We have identified what knowledge is. And we are saying we need knowledge management systems 
as organizations, as individuals, as groups to be able to manage. And what is he saying? He's saying a knowledge management system is any kind of IT system that's, that, that stores, that receives, that could define, that put together and make it readily available for collaboration, for understanding, for alignment, for competitive advantage. So when we have this system, knowledge management systems in place, it helps organizations to assist. And they can also be used as a center of knowledge base for users and for uh, as well as customers. And in addition, it is not only about, oh, the system that we put together, it's about software. We have softwares. We talk about the LMS, the e-learning platform. Those are integral parts of uh, a KMS. So LMS is also a subset. LMS, e-learning platforms, they are subsets of learning management system. So it's a software that is also a subcategory of enterprise content management system, and it's used for uh, benefits of individuals, benefits of our agents, benefits of our clients, and what have you. I want to do a quick one. I want to do a quick one. Um, I, 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 while I was preparing for this, I also checked what ChatGPT said about knowledge management system. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to stop the sharing of slides. I'll just read it for me. So knowledge management system are tools and techniques that organizations use to capture, store, share, and apply knowledge information effectively. The benefit of implementing KMS can be significant and can be binding. So uh, GPT also tells us about all of these things that we're referring to knowledge management system. Oh, prevention, you are still saying, what is this guy saying? You will get to understand. But remember, it's an IT system. It is a system that helps us to capture, that helps us to store, that helps us to to put together so that knowledge doesn't go away. Now, let me let me break this down. I, I grew up in an environment whereby uh, people make use of apps to kill illnesses and diseases. And it's so unfortunate in Nigeria today that our leadership, our, our government, our system do not put systems together, do not put something like non management system where all the knowledge, the skills to Care to cure sicknesses and diseases using local apps. We believe, oh, the guys from China, from Europe, they are medicine, their drugs are better off than us. No, they are not. It is so unfortunate that within the past 60 years, we have not been able to put them together. I remember specifically my father. My father used to take care of rheumatism. And as of today, that knowledge is not codified. I was just looking at it while, while preparing for it, that it, it kills rheumatism. And you hardly find cure for rheumatism uh, with, uh, in, in the hospital. It, it's, it's very, it's, it's, but there is a local app. What I'm saying is those particular knowledge, I'm, I'm not talking about that particularly alone. If you go to our environment, I remember today that uh, there is this particular herb that when you're having, when someone is having tuberculosis and when they plug this particular and they put it and they cook, they boil it and the person, they, it kills it automatically. But unfortunately, some of these things are not codified over the years and we are losing this knowledge skills gradually. And that is why it is important for us, for individuals, for organizations to put knowledge together, to have a system that institutionalize knowledge management in place, both at individual le uh, levels for organization, at individual levels, once your family is known for, put it together, have a, va for a family, a, a, a value system, have your visions, what you believe in, what has worked for generations before you. And if you look at uh, our brother from the Eastern part of the country, oh, when you're talking about business, they know how to do it magnificently. But some of the knowledge, when it comes to trading, yes, there have been reports. Some of them are now, some of our professors are now putting this into uh, a perspective, prosperous perspective, managing those information. But before now, it has never been codified. You just discover you learn trade and all the skills, you just go like that. And you will discover there is a particular trend over the past 50 years in Nigeria that businesses that are, are solely owned and managed 
by private individuals when they die because there is no specific process of managing the knowledge of codifying, capturing, and making use of this knowledge and ensure it is transferred to the next generation. We discover that at the end of their life, that is the end of their business. Our generation can do better. And that is why we are sharing this knowledge that we need to improve our system. We need to improve our society. We also need to improve our organization. And that we'll also be looking at what are these knowledge? Knowledge, they are categorized into three perspectives, the explicit knowledge, the tacit, and the implicit knowledge. The explicit knowledge information that can be written down, it can be written down. Like I said, if you want to uh, treat particular ailments uh, with uh, local apps, you put this, you put this, you put this together. And this type of knowledge is simple and can easily be shared. It can be easily be understood. Uh, example is SOP, employee and go processes, uh, our products, uh, developments, and what a view, what, what we do, that's explicit. But talking about the next one, which is tacit, the tacit knowledge is far more difficult to capture than explicit knowledge in the sense that it refers to individual skills and experience. These are difficult to explain. It is difficult to share to others. And you talk about the examples here, we have customer service, design abilities, you have some special skills that individuals carry. And that is where the jackpot syndrome, the exit, the talent war comes to play. That's when an organization leaves, when, when an employee leaves an organization, what, what they leave with that organization most times is not explicit knowledge, it's not implicit knowledge, but it's tacit knowledge. It's their experience over the years. They know what you should not do when you are doing a particular, when you are developing a product. They know what you should do when you are carrying out a research. And how can we ensure, and that is the essence of this particular session, how can we ensure that tacit knowledge is codified? We can easily put the uh, HR policy together and put them online. We can easily put uh, our employee uh, handbooks together and put them online. But specifically tacit knowledge, it has to do with personal and individual experience. And looking at the implicit knowledge is very similar to tacit knowledge except that it is easily codified. You can easily put it together. For instance, if you want to make, uh, if you have people that make um, uh, goods, they make goods, for instance, those people, let me use, for instance, the ones that we know, Zobo. You can say, oh, Zobo, this is how you do it. You put this together, you put ginger, you all of it. Someone who is not familiar with that process can pick up your manual and go through the process and do it. And over time, that person will not begin to learn. This is what you need to do so that that particular taste, that sour taste will not come. That one comes with experience. And that is why it's a little bit different. So we need to understand within ourselves, what are the tacit, what are the explicit, what are the implicit knowledge uh, that, are, that, that, that forms KMS. And we need to deal decisively with all of these sessions. Then again, that I will be going straight to other areas, some of the things that we need to know when it comes to KMS. Why is it important? I, I've said some of these things before. It is effective, it is, it is important for its effective solving of problems. And it's also a organization to plan. Like I said, organizations in Nigeria, like since 50 years ago, some of them are not where, nowhere to be found today because there is no process of managing knowledge. And that's affect the decision that comes into play that also aspect, uh, affects uh, dynamic learning because people are not learning. I've been in an organization whereby uh, we have older generation, the baby boomers more in the house within the system. And it, it was so difficult to transfer knowledge from them to us younger generation. But during that particular organization where that was there, there was a, 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 a monolithic management system put in place to ensure that the tacit knowledge is being transferred to us, the uh, incoming generation where we came into this organization. It's going to help dynamic learning. You have a blend of both uh, 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 all of the major generations, millennia, the baby boomers, the Gen Zs, they are still available in our workspaces today. And more uh, also, the one that I want to emphasize, I want to stay more on, is sustainability enabler. Research has shown that an organization that instituted effective knowledge management system will be three times better in the nearest future, in the sense that 
they manage the knowledge, they manage core competencies, they have a system in place, they have a roadmap, there is a framework, they also have an IT system, a process that capture, that distribute, that ensure the sharing of knowledge for different people within the organization. It has a way of creating a competitive advantage for such organization. For instance, my organization, Salam Pan Africa, has been assistant for over 100 years. This year, it's gonna be 105 years. You can Google it and you will see it there. What that means is that within the past 10 decades, my organization have been able to put in place a knowledge management system that ensure that both the explicit, the tacit, and the implicit knowledge does not go away. The knowledge from individuals as a corporate organization, they are codified in such a way that if you come into our organizations today, you will not say, ah, because you, want, you are going, the organization will collapse. I've seen organizations, and specifically, if you look at the reasons why some of our commercial banks, they are having problems today, with their IT is because most of the guys in uh, the business solutions, the software development of these banks, they are relocating, they are leaving the country. And most banks, most commercial banks in Nigeria, they do not have a system in place. Some of these things I'll be discussing will also be an a, a opportunity for us to institute some of these uh, strategies in our organization. So knowledge management system for me and for everyone is a sustainability enabler. When you have it within you and within your system, it's going to guarantee long-term success. Then looking at what, 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 is it, what, what does it entail? That, like I said, you might still be wondering that what, what, what are we saying? What is the essence of this? What this entails is we have standard operating. There are the things that we find, the things that you find on KMS, a typical KMS, we have your SOP, your HR policies, and you also have documentation regarding uh, your products, your services, your company, and specifically, you will see this on most company sites. Organizations, they do this on their site. And like I said, you have HR videos, and you have academics and training programs. This is where uh, your tutorials, your e-learning platforms, and what have you comes into play. And we also have organizations, you will see organizations doing webinars. Uh, several commercial banks, invest, investment company, they do uh, webinars, uh, uh, training programs free. They even do it free for you to come and learn what they are doing, how you can invest your money, how you can make your life better. They create this kind of financial inclusion, uh, the financial awareness and empowerment for women. You see different kinds of women empowerment financially that you have online. Those uh, particular initiative, all of these, they are speaking to strategies to manage knowledge within an organization. Those are the things that you will find in a typical management system. Then we are going to be going now to see how can we have it as individuals, how can we ensure that we institute a KMS knowledge management system within our organization. Number one, we need to define the capabilities, the skills, the competencies that we strategically position you, that we beg your pardon, that we strategically position your organization for a competitive advantage. For you to deliver value, you must define the capabilities. It is not that I want to do this, I want to make money, you want to do this, you want to, no, 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 no. You must define the capabilities. Oh, the World Economic Forum says there are 20 skills that is going to uh, sell more in the next five years. Yes, you cannot concentrate on the 20 skills. You need to narrow it down to three and say, this is what as an individual, three particular skills will make me, will position me strategically to become a valuable employee to any organization where I find myself. And you also need to perform a knowledge gap. You need to identify where you are. Knowledge gap uh, review is just identifying where am I today? Where where I want okay, to be. Uh, if you are not speaking, please ensure you, you mute your audio. Admin, could you please help us? All right, thank you. Um, you need to identify the gaps. You need to be able to say these are your strengths, making use of the SWOT analysis. What are the strengths, your weaknesses, the opportunities, and 
threats. You need to be able to identify those things that will affect you internally, those things that you have control over, those things that you don't have control over, that you just need to, to make plans, adequate plans for in case they come into place. Like for instance, nobody knew that election is going to be postponed today. Organizations that have framework in place, we understand that, oh, you just move. Like some of us, we expect to do, in fact, some people put their uh, marriage ceremony against this way. A, a, a non management system, a plan, a consistent contingency plan, we say in case if this happened, what happened? So I have seen people, because they know that election in Nigeria is unpredictable, they wanted to have their marriage in March because of their contingency plan, they move it a month uh, at age. Because they know, okay, let's say they even postpone by two weeks. My marriage will still come in April. But we will just say, ah, election is 11. We can pick 18. It, their plan is not there. So we need to look at it, review what are the strengths. I'm talking about the strength, both internally and those things that control, that we don't have control over. And we also need to compare. Compare with your colleagues. Compare with the companies. If you are working as an HR person or as a business leader, you need to compare with other capabilities to ensure that you have the knowledge skills and abilities, they are targeted. And you remember where we started from, knowledge is a subset of competence, knowledge, skills, and ability. And again, you need to establish a roadmap, which is the fourth item here. You need to understand a roadmap for the organization. They are by setting goals for knowledge management system. What does the company want to achieve? What do you want to achieve as an individual? What does the organization want to achieve? Then should be, a, a knowledge management system in place to ensure that those goals are met. Then another thing that is very key is promote all inclusive participation in development of knowledge gaps, skills, uh, core competencies across the organization. It is not something that the head of HR or the head of learning development can single-handedly do. It is not going to be possible. Individually, you can have a roadmap but as an organization, it must be all inclusive for it to be well embedded and effective within the organization. So next I'll be talking about having said all of this, having talked about the types, having talked about having a roadmap, what are the strategies that can be put in place? Yes, these are not all, but I just categorize them into two. Some of them I've mentioned, if you look on one side, the one in green, talk about the situations, the one on the right hand side talk about the actions. So what are the situations? What are your business goals? What are the gaps? At the moment, how is information, how is it shared within your organization? How is information stored within the organization? These are the situations. There are other situations. What are our competitors, what are they doing? Like I said, it's not limited to only this, but I want to concentrate because of our time. What are other organizations, our competitors, what are they doing regarding these particular uh, goals that we want to achieve? Then specifically, what is the organization strategy? And that is going to lead us to say, how do we create a learning environment? A learning environment is not just a, 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 the process, oh, let's put together, let's organize e-learning so that every day our people will have access. No, there should be a kind of a system that is being uh, shared, that is being initiated by the leadership of the organization. If the leadership of the organization is not learning, a leadership organization is not interested, does not have a buy-in in knowledge management system, it's not going to work. So the first thing to do is to ensure that people are encouraged to learn. And not only that people are encouraged to learn, most organizations who have what we call blade game, we do not allow people to make mistakes. We frown at people making mistakes, whereas making mistakes should be allowed, but should not, should not be encouraged. I'm not saying we should encourage it, but it should be allowed. People need to make mistakes, they need to learn. People need to come and experiment. We need to create an environment where people it is, an, is an agile organization, where people, as they learn, they bring to work. You are not waiting to get approval, you get long approval. Some of us are working in such organizations that you have to approve at different levels be before things are implemented. For us to really embed this particular system in place, we need to have this particular environment that enables learning, that enables people to come and share knowledge and say, guy, you don't know this, let me share with you. 
you are doing this work. Oh, it's taking a lot of time. Can I help you to solve this problem? People to come with their own self to work. And the second thing I talk about is reward and collaboration. Reward and collaboration. We need to put in a system where people are allowed to collaborate. If in an organization, collaboration is not, is not, is not in place, it's going to be really difficult because it's not going to be the job or the responsibilities of learning and development or HR alone to institute. You need to collaborate. We're talking about product development. We're talking about customer engagement, creating customer experience. The guys who are client facing, they need, they need, you need an input. They need to also come together. We need to have collaboration. And we also need to have uh, knowledge and knowledge management system team, a team that manage system, that manage knowledge within the organization. When such is in place, you can also be, be you can be rest assured that you are trying, you are striving to institutionalize knowledge within your system. And I talked about the third one here, which is select and customize right tools. There are several, several, several tools online. You just need to understand what works for you. And what works for you is a function of your business goals, is a function of your business strategies, is a function of what you want to achieve, your destination. I put it that in a simple term, your destination, what you want to achieve at the end of the day. And more importantly, you also need to stay in touch with new advancement, with new technology, the digital advancement that we have uh, in our generation today. But aside all of this, one of the actions, talking about uh, strategies to institutionalize it, I'll be speaking to succession plan and talent management system. They are related. A succession plan is the sense that you have guys who are the one managing your server. For instance, if you work in, in the financial service sector, you understand this better. Even in non-financial service sector, guys that manage server, the, those IT guys, they are, they are good people, they are wonderful people, but they can just stop before you know it, they are off. You need to have an effective succession plan, a system in place where you have what we call on-the-job training, what we call mentoring, what we call coaching in place. Uh, most times, because as human beings, we are selfish. We are not, uh, most times people are not in, in an environment that collaboration has not been really embedded. It will be difficult for people to share knowledge. But if we foster collaboration and uh, teamwork and togetherliness within our organization, we will understand. We understand that uh, we need to have a succession plan in place. A succession plan is going to help us because with that, even while a guy is the one who is uh, handling a particular role and is critical to that organization, the exit, oh, we might say, oh, it's not about Jaffa. This is not all about Jaffa alone. The exit of a critical member of a team can lead to the collapse of an organization. It can. But if a succession plan is in place, what a succession plan is simply saying is now you have an incumbent. An incumbent is on a particular role in the short term, within the next six to 12 months. Do we have people who can take up these roles? If we do not have people who can take up these roles, who are we going to profile? Your system, you also need to profile people that will go into this particular role and take over from the incumbent in the interior, in case any. Uh, uh, emergency occur, and this person is no more available to one reason or the other. And in the, in, in the short term, in the medium term, and in the long term. And when you have all of this identified, you identify successive and potential uh, replacement, what you need to now put in, what are the development? One of the development is mentoring. You need to tell them to work together. You need to encourage collaboration. And those guys, you also need to expose them. You also need to give them uh, training and development. They also need to go through mentoring, mentoring processes, but specifically coaching. Understudy, we call it understudy in some parlance, and we say this guy is understudying this person, and you, it needs to be deliberate. Even most times, when the incumbent doesn't want, it needs to be deliberate, and that's a way of doing it. We discover that when it goes to a point, we cannot, we cannot afford to have a system breakdown. I've seen it happen in commercial band that a system breaks down because a guy leaves the system. And it's, it, is, it is because knowledge management system has not been properly managed. Like I said, 
the tacit knowledge, the experience cannot be easily codified, but organization can work around it in such a way that within an organization, even when it is not open to everyone, specific people who are, who are privileged to work in a specific, in specific unit, they must have access to some information. It is not the only one person that knows it all. When a system, we have a system where it's only one person that knows it all, it's a potential danger for such organization. So those are the strategies, the situations, and the action. And I've mentioned uh, some points outside of this side, and that's the essence of all of our conversation uh, this particular day. And what, who are the users? I've said this before, the internal uh, stakeholders as well as the external stakeholders. The external stakeholders are, are, are customers, specifically our customers, our vendors, they need to have an understanding of our values, they need to understand our process, most vendors that supply equipment, they don't know what the organization is doing. They don't even care. It is because we do not have a knowledge management system in place to ensure that they know what we are doing. Oh, you frown at your vendors because they are not delivering value at you. Are they aware of what is expected of them? Are they aware of what you use their products, their output to do within your business? And the internal stakeholders, they are the employees, the leadership of the organization and what are viewed. Then what are the issues? Yes, there are several issues that we have whenever we are implementing uh, another management system. One of the critical issues to consider when you want to decide, when you want to decide, let's say you do not have uh, a KMS in your organization today, you want to decide what are the things that you need to ascertain. You need to ascertain where you are, where are you at the moment. And you also need to talk about the learning culture. Is collaboration allowed? Is, is teamwork embedded? Is it just on your core value on your side that you have collaboration? Is it something that is that is alive within the system? It's going to help a lot. If not, that's where you need to also start from. Not by saying, oh, we want to buy a platform and you start to buy. No, 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 that's not the first thing. Identify where you are. How is information being shared at the moment? How is it being stored? Is it scattered here and there? Then what's the what's the culture? What's it like? Then one of the things that we need to uh, encourage that we need to look out for, you have a system that is cloud storage. It's, it should be cloud-based. A web-based system is the best. Not a system that people, your stakeholders, external stakeholders, your customers, they are struggling to get. No, it should be with just a click. I put your URL address into my web, my phone. I should be able to see everything that I need to know about your organization. Instant updates. We should be able to update when you want to consider. And we have talked about collaboration. And I also talk about accessibility. Accessibility is the same thing as having it on the cloud. And you also need to stay up to date. And the last part is the reporting. The reporting of any KMS is critical. How is reporting going to be uh, done? How are you going to know how many people who have viewed, who have read, who have gone through it? How, you, how will you identify those who are making use of it? And uh, are there process for feedback, for comment, for feedback, for people to, to give back uh, what they have learned and provide feedback on what they have learned? And more importantly, I want to talk about integration. A knowledge management system should have uh, the kind of API that can, uh, the API, if every, every system that has API can easily be integrated. So talking about integration, you can have a KMS that is that is an embodiment of other platforms. I will show us a live environment and we'll be able to see and learn more together. So that things, these are the things that are the critical issues that we need to consider when deciding on a knowledge management system. Then what are the issues associated with this? One of the issues is most of the time, Organizations will just wake up in the morning. That people will say, oh, we want to have KMS in place, and they go and back. Without going back to identify what are the things that you need to identify. How is information currently shared within your system? What is the learning culture? If you have not instituted collaboration, having a KMS is going to be, an, is going to be a serious headache for your system, for your organization. So identify things that need to be done first. Talk about collaboration. What about the system before going into go and look for it? And one of the challenges that we have is that across organizations, if I ask every one of us on this one, as many that will see, uh, see this video after now, you have knowledge fragmented, information scattered everywhere. 
This one is on SharePoint. This one is on folder. This one is on Google Drive. This one is on OneDrive. You have information scattered all over the place. It is a lack of a proper KMS within the organization. All the information on different platforms, on uh, different folders that you have them within the system, on your SharePoint, on your this, you need to put them together. And that is the essence of knowledge management system. And another thing issue is cultural change. And we ought to cover the storage of tacit knowledge. You remember uh, when we're talking about the types of KMS, we talk about tacit knowledge. That one is, it needs to be deliberate. The experience, that speaks to the experience of individual. Another issue is measurement strategies. What are you going to measure if people are actually making use of it? What are the strategies that need to put in place? How do you track? How do you encourage that people go to that platform, your knowledge management system? And another challenge is continuous change in technological advancement. I've seen organizations that implement knowledge management system and they just go to sleep. And before, before you know it, that particular system becomes updated. So we need to, as individuals who work, even whether you're working as learner development or HR person, you, your organization, you need to stay in touch with the organization with technological advancement uh, within the environment where you operate and where your organization also operate. Now, I will show you a few examples before we look at the live environment. And we uh, I'll talk about a few other things before we call it a day. These are tools. We have Confluence, you have ClickUp, you have Zendesk, you have Zoho. Document 360, Scribe, Live Agent, Service Now, Knowledge Management System. These are management system tools that are available. That are available online. You can Google any of these, you will see. But in all of these, even if your organization does not have, cannot afford to go for Confluence or Document 360, uh, some of these platforms are not so expensive uh, when it talks about the subscription. And, uh, uh, and what have you, but I've seen majority of the organizations in Nigeria, even medium-sized organizations, they have Office 365. If you have Office 365 at your disposal, whether you are in HR or you are in product or you are in the market uh, department, sales and marketing, if you have Office 365, it's something that we need to make use of. The ones that are videos, you, you talk about, you can share video on Yammer, you can share video on Microsoft Streams, that's a logo to be, be uh, directly below MS Forms. And you have all of this platform. On, on Microsoft Teams is another tool that we can effectively deploy for us to manage knowledge within the organization. We can, if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you if you if you sit down and go to that, uh, Microsoft Teams, you can manage knowledge through this particular platform. So what I'm saying in essence, we don't have to pay a uh, subscription for, for all of this before you can earn. I discover most of the in Nigeria, you have Microsoft SharePoint for Office 365 for SharePoint. Your organization is already making payments, subscription, multi-subscription to Microsoft. But we are not making use of this knowledge management system for our organization. And let's now say, let's now say that, oh, you don't have uh, SharePoint, your organization cannot afford to go for SharePoint. Organization does not have Office 365. Their colleagues, their business leaders, you have Google. Google is free. Google is free. There are so many things that you can do on Google that is free and we can use it to manage knowledge within our organization. And that's basically will lead me before, uh, before I go to the last uh, item that I want us to share something about. I want to show us some life environment and I will start. Let me start with, uh, let me start with Google. Let me start without Google. You know, I was saying, with Google, even if your organization cannot afford to play, pay for some of this platform that we, we have, you can, you can make use of Google. If you go to Google, you will see this particular Google app. There are several apps here. From Google Drive to uh, Google Chat to Google Meet, all of this, you don't need to pay. At some point, you might need to pay. You have Blogger, you have 
slides, you have so many things. This is a key tool that we can use to manage system across different organizations, across different organizations. And even still talking about Google, you know, this particular platform, this particular session is here. I, I, I brought it out to prepare. If you look at this particular platform led by my organ in the house, Mr. Yemi Adioshun, this is a typical example of a knowledge management system. If you go, as I don't know how many of us you have seen, we have a total of 94 videos. If you are in the HR space and you are finding it difficult to know so many things and you don't know what to do, this is a platform for you to learn. I've seen from data analytics. If you scroll down, you will see all of these platforms, several sessions on employer branding. The one that was done yesterday was talking about century strategies to effective communication. This is another typical example. What you need to understand is what is the strategy. So for HR mentorship session, uh, Mr. Yame Adiosho has a strategy to develop others. He has a mind to, to ensure that knowledge, competencies of other colleagues are enhanced. And he has created a knowledge management system. So for me, this is a typical knowledge management system. And in the coming days, I see this particular platform going into leaps and bounds. And I see this platform being integrated into some other things. And you will see, aside all of this, I've also seen, I'm not sure it's here, sir. Please confirm, uh, some of the slides for each of these sessions have been put together on a drive. I think I saw it somewhere on a drive that even if you cannot afford to be looking at videos on YouTube, you can download these materials and go through them. You cannot be in this generation, in this dispensation where we are, and you say you do not have knowledge about Asia. It is only if you decide not to enhance your skills. So this is a typical example. And this is what, yes, we know. I want to show us another particular uh, knowledge management system. And permit me to say this, I don't know these people. Hello, can we see my screen? Mr. Adi, please, Mr. Adi, please confirm you can see my screen. We can see your screen. Yes, All right. thank you. Yeah, so see. if you look at this particular future soft, it, I just, uh, in one of those days, I think about last, uh, last month, or January this year, I stumbled on this particular platform. And on this particular platform, I have several things that I've learned there. In their own system, like I said, I don't know them. I don't know the owner. And I know that they're in Yaba, Lagos. You know what they have done? They have done something similar to what we call uh, the HR mentorship uh, group. You can see, you can see, myself, you will see something about artificial intelligence in, in intelligence in digital marketing, consistent uh, branding, how to build your brand, marketing and digital uh, marketing, customer experience. And what I want to say is this: this is also a typical knowledge management system for an organization. For this particular organization, what they did is. They have lunch and learn uh, session, I think once in a month. All of these people that you are seeing on my screen, they are employees of this organization. They come together and share knowledge. And you should know before they could get to this point, there must have been teamwork. There must have been collaboration. There must be a culture of learning within that organization before they even decide, oh, let's have it. And this particular system, yet, though on YouTube, it has been integrated into their own platform. That you don't, I don't even need to sign in to create a password, like some other platform that you need to sign in and they will obtain your details. No, 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 no. You don't need to do that. You just need to sign in here and learn. This is a typical example of a knowledge management system. For instance, if this particular organization is hiring people and the app people are coming to the system for the first time, all they need to do is to ask them to go through all of this. And if uh, an employee is, is an avid learner, he's going to find it very, very interesting. And that will lead me to what we do in my current organization. I want to believe that you can see, see my screen. This is a typical example of a knowledge management system. You will see on this platform, you will see Sanlam link, where you will find a link to all our, our businesses. And aside that, you also have same that is Sanlam Emerging Market Learning Academy. There's a learning academy, you, you might not be able to see this, but if, if you click on it to access to so, you might not be able to see it. But for us, internally, we'll have us to be able to log in. And this particular, you have another uh, session on the on, on the on, 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 on this uh, knowledge exchange, which is talking about all that the business do, talking about our compliance, 
talking about our communication, our strategy, the kind of insurance that we do, both live and general, and other international distribution channels that we have our finance department. And aside that, you also find reports. If you check, you will see data and reports. Eh? If I need to check reports of 2022 reports, I have access to it. I can see it and say, oh, this is what we did across the continent. Nigeria also inclusive. And we also have templates, templates and guidelines. I have templates I need to use. I don't need to start to struggle all over again. All of this information has been codified. And not that it's only codified, it is, it is every day. Every day is continuously updated. And this is a typical example. If you scroll down, you will see all what I'm talking about. For each of these sessions, you begin to see for distribution. So it's taking me, so you have to take you to so many things you'll be able to see. All of these are linked, are linked together. So this is a typical example. But like I said, if it is on SharePoint, if your organization does not have uh, the opportunity of buying or making subscription to Microsoft to get a SharePoint, the least that you can do is to get another management system active either on Google or YouTube or whichever case that you might have. So depending on your business strategy, depending on your business goal, that will determine the kind of system that you will uh, eventually make it so. But peradventure, you have all of these tools already available in your organization. I want to encourage you to go ahead and utilize them the maximum. Then finally, let me share uh, a final thought before we call it a day. Final thought, uh, we'll be talking about having seen some of these live environments. Let's talk about what we call the knowledge economy. Is it, it is, this is highly interesting. The knowledge economy is specifically speaking to research, development, and innovation. And uh, this particular concept, this particular concept started in 1960s, which was Peter Drucker that started that it is going to uh, a time where it is going to be on skilled labor, where people will just come and do manual work, that it, it is coming to a time in the economy of the world, in the global economy, that what is required will be organizations that will, that, that, that will have competitive advantage, are organizations that invest in research and development, that concentrate on individual specialist knowledge and expertise. So we are talking about individuals at this level. You know, we talk about the micro and the macro level. Organizations need to develop people that have expertise. So it's not going to be scalable. Are you just going to be doing manual work? No, that is knowledge economy. And, they, and, and according to World Bank, there are four pillars of the knowledge economy. The knowledge economy, number one pillar is an institutional regime with economic incentives. And the second one is educated and skilled workers. And you will discover that with educated and skilled workers, if you are skillful, you can transfer knowledge. And that is exactly what is happening in Nigeria today. All our skills, our experience, and even in the HR industry, they are Japanese. And it's knowledge economy. It's a knowledge economy. You transfer the skills. And this particular skill that we are referring to is what we call the tacit knowledge. It is also an economy that is based. One of the pillars is effective innovation system. When you are storing knowledge, when you are capturing knowledge, but you are not effectively utilizing them to innovate and transform your organization, transform the product and services that you provide, that organization will soon go down the drain. And it's and another pillar, the, the last pillar is information infrastructure. Information infrastructure, talking about digital advancement, technological advancement, all of this refers to the knowledge economy. So we cannot talk about knowledge management without talking, encouraging both organizations and individuals to invest in information infrastructure to be more innovative. And as individuals educate and skill up, we need to reskill, we need to upskill because expertise and specialists in Whatever you do, in whatever, whether you're in marketing, you're in sales, you're in engineering, whatever you do in any industry, you need to be skillful. And that is knowledge economy. It's come, it, it will come to a point that it is what you know that you get paid for. It is what organizations know over a period of time that you get paid for. And at the end of it, you will discover that it actually pays when you develop yourself. And when of an organization build on these four pillars of the knowledge economy, according 
to the world bank this is where i'll be drawing the cutting for the day it's time for us to have questions and have interactions let's have some thought also share if you have contribution i'll be handing over to mr yemi at the ocean thank you once again for sharing uh some thoughts this evening thank you sir Wow, 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 what a blast. That was a great presentation. Thank you so much, Mr. Larry. Thank you, that was Explosive. Um, I'm going to do something. If you really enjoyed that session by Mr. Larry, please drop your emoticons, your emojis in one word, in one sentence, in one phrase, how you feel about this session tonight. Please drop your comments on the chat box right away. I'm going to make a special request. You need to come back, sir. You are going to choose the topic you want to handle, but you need to come back. And it will be quick. It will, it will right, be too sir. long. I know you are super busy, but man, that was, that was, I dropped right, a message sir. in the chat box that you are the first person that will teach us, and you used us as case study of conversation. That was so, so beautiful. So um, like uh, Mr. Larry has said, do you have a question? Do you have a comment, a contribution? Please, um, if you raise your hands, we will give you permission to, 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 um, to, um, to speak. I know we can unmute, but please, for orderliness sake, um, you want to raise your hands, then we'll call on you and then you, you can speak. Um, let me see if anybody has raised their hand so far, if you have a question. So while you are speaking, sir, somebody sent a question to me privately that's in the organization. Oh, there's a particular employee who is like a key man risk. She knows mm. a lot about a particular aspect of the business. She's completely reluctant to share the knowledge. What advice would you have for the employee for this particular organization? Their staff, they are listening right now. They're on this call. The person sent me the message um, privately. Okay. Uh, yes, we like I said, one of the things, one of the strategies, you know. Uh, the HR profession does not work one way. Everything is intertwined one way or the other. Uh, we might discover that that particular employee who is having uh, a whole lot of knowledge, skills, what I what we refer to as tacit knowledge uh, within ourselves is not engaged, is, is disgruntled. So the first thing is to identify whether this person is disgruntled or the level of engagement. If you see a fully engaged employee, a fully engaged uh, staff who has specialized skills, they want to share knowledge. And everybody that knows that when you share knowledge, you get better. They want to develop others. They want people to come under them and learn and become better. But in a situation where you find such, you discover that it is beyond, it is beyond just learning and development of the management system is something that has to do with HR. We need to engage, the person needs to be engaged. If the person is disgruntled, to, peradventure the organization might not even acknowledge and feel, oh, what is he doing? And yet the organization knows that it's kind of, but it's not being paid well. You know, it has a way of affecting how uh, some employees behave. So for such, first thing is ensure that this employee is fully engaged. When an engaged employee is having critical skills, like a key man within the system, when they are fully engaged, we discover that they will be the one, such employee will be the one to call on people who are reporting to him or her to say, come and learn, I need to show you these things, don't kill me, I don't want to be the only one doing this work alone, that's the first thing. Then, having done that, if, if it is pay, if it is the, 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 the compensation that is not up to par with what is obtainable in other climbs, I mean, in other organization, in your industry, the best thing is to see how that employee can get a raise. That's on one side. Then the other side, we also need to put in a plan in place. As I spoke to succession plan. There must be a succession plan where people are reporting to this person and it, it, it's a deliberate thing. Some of the things that we cannot uh, start to, I, I spoke it briefly, but my guy is here. If that person, you can consult him 
it has been the industry for decades and it's going to be a long way, uh, help a long way to help if your organization does not have a succession plan in place. There, there needs to be a succession plan. Even at the even if you have done, you have raised a pay, a pay you have tried to engage some employees can be very difficult. They might say decide, I'm not going to share. But when you have a succession plan in place, it will help. It has a way of distilling this information because you are trying to tell this person you cannot be everywhere. And it is not only the responsibility of this person. This person didn't also carry these things, these kids from, from heaven when they were born. They learn it one way or the other. Yes, they might have special skills, they might be fast, they might be a fast learner. So putting all our employees through the process of taking them through and allowing them to make mistakes, giving room for collaboration, allowing them to grow, to test their hands, is just by being uh, agile, ensuring that our employees are agile, then we can, over a period of time, organize them. But remember, on one hand, engagement of this employee, and the other hand, a proper and effective succession plan will help a lot more. But if you need further assistance, you can get in touch with Mr. DME, uh, Mr. Dioshun is going to uh, help us uh, uh, to solve this. He has experience. If you check his profile, I've known him for quite some time now, and he's going to help us to do that. Thank you. Okay, so before we call on Joy, we have a follow-up question from another person for the same question. And she says, in addition to that question, what do you do when you have a new employee that such an employee who has specialized skills is supposed to report to, but is not willing to share knowledge? In other words, you have that senior person that is holding knowledge, and you now have a new staff, a new team member reporting to that old staff, and the old staff is refusing to share knowledge. Okay. Uh... Thank you, Thank you. Uh, very much. I, I think I, I, I experienced that uh, one of the companies that I worked, uh, I moved from the consulting, I moved to Royal St. PLC, and specifically I had a supervisor. Uh, the day, the year he graduated was the year I was born. So the, the gap between us was so enormous. And you know, at a point he was reluctant. He, was, he didn't show me so many things. But what I did was to calm down and warm myself into his heart. So there are some things that you might not be able to do to have, there are some things that are, from, I'm talking from experience. So I warmed myself into his heart in such a way that I'm open at a particular point, all that he wants me to do is just to do photocopy for him. And I took it. I, I could have said, ah, eh, I'm, a, I'm a graduate. I'm an associate of CIPM. I only come to this organization. All that you give me for money to give me is going to be doing photocop. I kept quiet because I knew. I don't know how that came up. I just kept quiet. I was just comfortable. I was just doing my thing. I would just say, ah, sir, any of that thing. He would say, no, no, go. So when he now saw that, he's like, this guy is, uh, is, is serious, doesn't mind whether you. I'm not saying that our organization, our HR leaders should be doing, sending us petty uh, stuff, but I, I'm, I'm using my own experience. But I waited because I know him to, uh, he's a senior, he's retired now, he's a senior HR person. And I learned a lot from him. Within the space of three months, I, we started developing a relationship that will come and say, Larry, come, 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 come. We have a policy. And this policy is saying, that was the first time he told me about something like claw, claw back for management people are exiting. We had some of our leaders exiting at that level. Even what some of our, HR persons in that department does not know. He will come into the room and tell me, this is how you do this, this is how you do this, this is how you do this. This, this is where this policy is. This is the interpretation of this policy. So personally, what I will encourage is those people who are working with those people, human beings, generally we are selfish. We are selfish people and we want to hold information. We don't want people to be better than us. That is the primary way that people look at it. But ideally, if people know that when you share knowledge, you are better off, they will not be doing that. But even at that, even when they don't know, my advice is please develop a relationship. Let those employees develop a relationship. They won't just know because the person that you like, the person that you want to be with, you don't want to hide special knowledge from them. You want to help them. You want to empower them. That's my simple way of addressing this question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much.
Joy, you have the floor. You can unmute and ask your questions or make your contributions. Hello, Joy Haba. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Larry. Good evening, Mr. Amy. Good evening, Good evening, evening ma'am. Thank evening, you so much. Thank you so, so much. This is very helpful for me. You know, so straight to my question, um, I want to ask on, on succession planning. So this is practical now. Um, I work with um, right. a private um, organization, a, a one-man business, yeah? Okay. So um, when I joined the company, I discovered that they do not have a succession plan in place. So for some departments, okay. supply chain, um, accounting department, um, some key roles, they just have one person working there, you know? And then um, the rest of the guys, they're just on the field. So I try to develop a succession plan in place so that considering the current trend, if somebody leaves, yeah. like the, the word you use now, the JAPA um, thing, you know, then what happens yeah. to that um, department? You know, but he kicked against it. He wasn't comfortable with that. And his fear, which I know, I mean, I, I saw it from, from his response was, was that, why do we want to have succession plan you know anybody can leave if they want to leave and we can always employ and i can tell you for a fact that his fear is that he also as a ceo does not want to have somebody to understudy him somebody to to you know over uh, to shadow him you understand what i mean so it was it was a struggle for him because he, he doesn't he is more like he is the one that does the signing. He's the one that do the authorization and all that. So he doesn't want anybody to see the books of account. He doesn't want anybody to know what's going on there. So with my succession plan, it means that somebody is going to um, job shadow him and know exactly what he's doing, which he doesn't want. You know? So I, I, I saw it that he would rather leave it for his, um, I don't know, his plan, maybe family member or something. Why yes. um, just an ordinary staff to come and see what's happening in the company or no, you know, profit and loss and all that. So he, he was, it was really a, an issue for me. And at some point, mm -hmm. I'll tell you that three, three staff, they, they left the Jackpot, you know, let me use the word. So they left and I had to start uh, um, um, recruiting, sending CVs out, all that to go. It was tedious for me. You know, so I, I, I'm not really comfortable with that. And I have tried to pass this as much as I can to him that, look, we should have a succession plan in case in place. What if this person leaves? What happens to that department? And he honestly did not want to look into that. And I'm not comfortable with that as an HR because it put a lot of pressure on me when a particular staff leaves. You know, then there's a vacuum. I have to start struggling for people who can fit into um, such rules. So what, 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 what do I do in such um, scenario? He's the MD, he's the All CEO right. of the company. Yes. So he pays thank you salary. for, yes, thank you for that question. I, I, my first response would say, uh, wisdom is profitable to direct. And you also need to be careful so that you don't find yourself um, fighting a war that you cannot win. The truth of the matter is, like we said, leadership is critical here. If the leadership doesn't believe in it, there is practically nothing that you can do about it. And the first thing that we also emphasize during the course of the presentation is that you also need to get the buy-in of the leadership, not just going to start with the plan. You also need to sample his opinion. So one of the times when I want to discuss with business leaders, I sample their opinion, I do engagement here and there, come back. When they are not feeling good about it, I don't work on it. If they don't feel that it's something that is due until I come back, I think go back and have that discussion. And I think where you need to start from is not by starting with succession plan, is having a conversation, a conversation that is business oriented in the sense that if you walk up to the managing director who is the owner of the business and say, sir, what are your plans for this business in the next 10, 20 years? Now, if you, if you are not in this business today, is it your son or your family member? He, he will, he will be fine before you even ask that question, he will, he, he will be, he'll be thinking, oh, this, this lady is thinking about this business. So we need to start a business-oriented questions, a conversation that has to do with the goals of the business, the strategy of the business. That is what is going to lead to succession plan. So we are asking questions. Now we're starting the year. We are in Q1. What are the plans? 
is it only for this year? Now we we the plan we have a plan for this year. You have a plan. Every organization will have a target. What you want to achieve? You ask the question, sir. In the next five years, what is the plan for this particular system? What is the plan for this organization? In that particular process of engagement, they will tell you, ah, in the next five years, this is how I want to be. This is how I want to be. Before you know, you will play. You will be the one to tell you. And in the process, that is when some structure. You remember we talk about strategy when we when we're discussing. Uh, the, the seven A's of McKinsey. We talk about strategy, we talk about structure. So in most organizations that are owned by, by businesses in Nigeria, one of the key issues that they have is they, have, they don't have system. They don't have strategy in place. They don't have structure. So when you now begin to talk about what is the business goal, sir, the next 10 years, where do you see business? Let's start to make plans. It is in that plan that the people need the skills that are required with coming. And it is in that particular process of coming up with the strategy of achieving those goals. That is when we can stylishly have that conversation. But believe you me, if you walk up to the same decision, they will say no. And again, I also want to say this while you were uh, explaining the issue. I also want to say that most of the time, what we do as HR people is just a conversation plan. No, it is not a succession plan. Like the succession plan should be critical, should be strategic. It is not every role that is critical. In my organization, what I do is I have critical roles, I have non-critical roles. So we need to be able to say, sir, if this person do today, this thing will break down. And if he knows the implication, and if you if you are able to put it into facts and figures, the cost implication to the company, if a specific organ, if a specific employee leads the system, not just those roles that can be easily replaced. In my organization today, there are about three, four, five rules that they are the they are the soul of the organization. I mean, nothing must happen to them. They are key man. Nothing must happen to those guys. But every other rules can be replaced three months, six months. But there are some rules that for us, I remember in, in the oil and gas industry, there are rules that we do not have the skills available here in Nigeria. That we need to go to India, that we need to go to Jamaica, that we need to go to Europe to find those skills. When you have such a business, and your leader knows, the business leader knows that if we lose this guy and we don't have any plan, there will be a problem. So we need to also, uh, also identify those issues. Those are the things that will help us. But specifically, I will say wisdom is profitable to the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. 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 And as you respond to that question, you will also be sharing your closing remarks. And the question is from Abiodun Oladimeji. He says, sir, if an employee is well knowledgeable in the use of the software and is being made a champion on the software knowledge, please, how do we retain the knowledge in a situation where the champion decides to go? Okay, and uh, that's the essence of the conversation that we've been having before. We need to put in a knowledge management system and that is what is going to help, and we said, what are the things that you have in knowledge management system? The standard operating procedure. What are the steps? If it's a software development company, what are the steps? There are things that can be codified, which are the explicit and explicit knowledge. Those ones, they are not, they are not negotiable. Every organization should have the SOP, how you do things, your HR policy, they should be codified. But speaking to tacit knowledge, that is what we are talking about. We are trying to concentrate effort on how do we retain this knowledge? And one of the measures we have said is that there should be a collaboration within the system whereby people are allowed to come to work with themselves, the whole self, and they are also allowed, they are encouraged to share knowledge, to develop others. And we also talk about talent strategies. We also talk about succession plan. We also, in one way or the other, spoke to employee engagement. That when your employees are fully engaged, it will be difficult for them to share knowledge with their colleagues. So it is, it is not one side fits all. It's something that we need to look at from a, a from a holistic view and come to a point whereby the knowledge that that particular single employee is carrying, everybody has it. Like in my department today, you cannot say you, you are the champion of any knowledge, though, because we do. KSS knowledge sharing sessions where we tell us, say, this is how you do this, this is how you do this. If I have a problem, I'm, I'm, I encounter a problem while doing my job, I call on my colleagues. And in the process of explaining that, we get to learn. 
I've got to a point analyzing data for the organization, and I want to do some things on Excel, and to do something on Power BI, Power BI. I couldn't do it. I would call up my colleagues in the same department, say, ah, you have forgotten. They taught us now, this is how you do this. Oh, thank you. That's how to collaborate. But if the level of engagement is low, it's going to be difficult. So one of the ways that you can go through this, I encourage you to go through this particular video. You will see what we optimize, the strategies, having a roadmap, uh, the types of knowledge, the ones that you need to consult on, the ones that are given that you must have, must be codified, your procedures, your products, uh, features, all those ones should be codified. But specific knowledge, which are uh, specific to uh, employees that are on specific roles, which I refer to as tacit knowledge, we need to find a way of embedding them. And over the period of time, like for instance, you will see the side I showed on future soil, they have come out to say, this is how you do this. And in the process of KSS sharing knowledge, they have, they have explained it all to the colleagues. You discover that you have those information within your system. Abiodun, I think I've uh, responded to your question. Thank you, sir. Thank you so, so, so much. For this welcome, session. Sir. I do appreciate the privilege, sir. Very explosive. Thank you for sharing so generously out of the abundance of your heart, out of the wealth of your experience. We do not take your generosity for granted. We pray that um, Almighty God will continue to bless you, bless the works of Amen. your hand, keep you and, and your family. You know, thank you so so much, Amen. ladies and gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you so much, man. and good night. Remember, codify the knowledge. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great uh, week ahead. Thank you, and God bless you, sir. Thank you once again for the privilege. Thank you for giving us this platform. I do appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome, sir.